It's the biggest opportunity in the history of the world. Right now can actually be one of the greatest opportunities of your lifetime. This crash is going to be so big, even if they solve the coronavirus crisis, it's still going to crash. You've got to be so much smarter. So I was down $800,000 at 32 years old. And my rich dad and my poor dad, you know, my poor dad was a great guy. He's a school teacher, head of education for the state of Hawaii. And my rich, my, my poor dad felt sorry for me. And my rich dad says, hey, congratulations. You lost your first business. See, it's in the mindset. He says, most entrepreneurs will lose three businesses. So rather than run and declare bankruptcy, he says, look, go talk to all your investors. Tell them you messed up. <laughs> Tell them you're going to work it out. You're going to pay them back and go fix that blood business of yours. So rather than run and hide like some of my partners did, this is in Hawaii where I started the Velcro wallet business. I had to go back in and kind of find out most of the mistakes I made. And then when I could pay people back because the business was up and running, then I started to pay people back from the successful operation. So I learned more from failing than I did in all my years of school. And in real life, the people that make the most mistakes are the smartest people. So the average person, they go out, they buy a house, and say, oh, it's an asset. But every month, it's flowing straight to the bank. So your money flows straight to the bank. Not that intelligent. You know, I want the money to flow from the bank to me. So it flows to the bank. Or what they'll do is they'll buy a stock or a bond or a mutual fund, and it's an asset and it flies sh straight to Wall Street. Not your asset, it's Wall Street's asset. And the third line, when you look under expense, first line is tax. So the average employee, like my poor dad, with a high paying job, the money comes in, goes straight out to taxes and to the government. Make sense? So you, when, you, when you get a job, first line, taxes, second, mortgage to the bank, third, your 401k or your IRA, straight to Wall Street. Look at this chart here, it's called the cash flow quadrant. E and S, employee and self-employed. That was my poor debt. You know, they, these guys work for money. These guys are not capitalists. They work for money and they invest their own money. On the B and the I side is my rich dad side. That's the capitalist side. Capitalists use other people's labor and other people's money to get rich. Which side do you want to be on? I'd rather be on the capitalist side. So that's the only difference. It's a whole shift of mindset and education, but everybody can do it if you want to do it. The reason I make more money it's because it's not what I'm doing what I love. I do sometimes what I hate so I can have the assets that I love. I love having a business. So the business affords me the lifestyle I want. And then I invest in real estate. This is what I know. The higher the risk, the more education it takes. How badly you want to learn. Most people don't have it. They want a job, they want job security, they want a paycheck, they want a 401k. And that's why they don't get to come here. That's why they don't get to come over here. Nothing right or wrong, you know. I don't ever want to be here. I knew when I was your age I wanted to come here, but the higher the risk, the higher the returns, but also the higher dedication, education, and study you have to go through. The rich don't work for money is number one expense is tax. See, there's three kinds of income earned portfolio passive. So earned income is if I get a job, that's earned income. If I'm a doctor or a programmer, that's earned income, because I'm working for it. If I buy, a, if I buy let's say, Apple for $10, and I sell it for 20, that's uh, portfolio income, capital gains. Yeah. But passive income, which is cash flow, is never done. For well, those of you who remember 87 and old enough, it wasn't just subprime crash. It, it took out the entire savings and loan industry. I mean, a whole banking system 
collapsed and the savings and loans collapsed just got taken out. So this market just kept crashing and I kept saying to Kim, yes. So it was 87, 88, and it just got worse. And I said, in 1989, at the height of pessimism or the depth of pessimism, I said, yes, this is it. I'm going to get rich now. And as, as Buffett always says, you always buy when the bears are selling. And when the bears finally give up, that's when you go in. As you know, we learned little to nothing in school. But in fact, you'll find out that going to school actually diminishes your ability to get rich. You know, so that goes counter to what everybody tells you. Go to school, get a job, and you'll make money. And that worked probably a thousand years ago. Not working today. The number one reason to be an entrepreneur is not about money. The number one reason to be an entrepreneur is personal development. You know, to develop yourself, to be, as the army says, to be all you can be. I always say the same thing that Jim says. I say it on Lear Capital, you know, I'm on Fox a lot. Right now, people say, well, I can't afford gold. Well, buy silver. You know, silver is so undervalued today. I can buy silver for two bucks. I can go to a coin dealer and buy a dime for two bucks, 10 cents for two bucks, get that. So everybody can do something to get what I call real money, not fake money. In 1971, the US dollar became fake when Nixon took us off the gold standard. And as I write about in my book, Fake, in 72, I was flying behind enemy lines and I went to buy my first gold. The trouble is Americans don't know what gold was. Plus in 72, I finally bought my first Kruger in for about 50 bucks in Hong Kong. And I became a criminal because I had to smuggle that Kruger in into the United States because it was illegal for Americans to own gold. Thank God in 74 or 75, they made it legal again. But that Kruger and I paid, let's say, 50 bucks for it. Today it's worth 1,500 bucks. Now, who was smarter, the guy who saved money or the person who saved gold? And silver's in that same category right now at about $15. So anybody says, I can't afford gold or silver, <laughs> I don't know what rock they're living in. Right. Let's just say this, you know, people say, what can I do? Well, everybody can go out and buy silver right now. Mm -hmm. Silver price went down today. It's good news. It's less than 20 bucks. Everybody in the world can afford 20 bucks. But again, out of 100, only two might buy silver. This is the greatest opportunity in the history of the world. It's also the worst time in world history. Mm -hmm. But what you do with it is up to you. Hope is for hopeless people. There's only activity.